Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam, I hope you're doing really well. And on this channel, I like to talk about all things film, Blu-ray and physical media collecting. Now, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, I'm going to be going over my complete boutique Blu-ray uh, collection. So at the minute, I'm sort of going through this experiment where I am sort of curating my Blu-ray collection and sort of adding titles to my permanent collection each week and getting rid of a title that for me serves no more uh, use in my collection. And yeah, so I just wanted to give an overview of the boutique Blu-rays at least that I currently own and maybe go along and give some thoughts on some of the ones that I may be getting rid of in the future. And yeah, I mean, people generally enjoy these sort of um, Blu-ray collection videos. I know I do. I could watch them endlessly um, and some of them I've watched multiple times on YouTube so uh, yeah this is going to be split up into three individual videos because it took me about an hour and a half to film um, my boutique blu-ray collection I may have gone into a bit too much detail when I was scanning through each of the films in my on my shelves but um, I just felt the need to talk about them as I pulled them off the shelf so yeah, this will be split into three parts and yeah, so I hope that you enjoy everybody. Hey everyone and welcome to my complete Blu-ray collection video. So as you might be aware, if you follow my channel at the moment, I'm sort of going through a, a journey of curating my Blu-ray collection because I have too many films in my collection that I don't need to have in my collection. They're not things that I'm typically going to revisit on a regular basis or at all. So I don't really feel the need to have them on my shelf. So, but I thought I would do like a complete overview of what I actually currently own in my collection and just to give people an idea about my tastes and what I have and what could potentially be purged from my collection as that series goes on and what films that are sort of forever films basically that I will keep for the rest of my life. So yeah I have two of these sort of bookcases that have some mostly blu-rays and stuff on them that have some games as well and then I also have another one over here which has mostly got like my boutique blu-ray stuff, Arrow, uh, indicator, vinegar syndrome, um, what else have we got here? Lots of arrow, BFI, uh, second run, uh, arrow academy, bunch of Eureka, masters of cinema stuff, my criterion shelves, um, also third window films, small collection of those, uh, curse and artificial eye, a small bunch of Severin and then I've just got some video games at the bottom there. So yeah, if we start at the top and let's uh, let's do this. I hope you enjoy this. This is going to absolutely kill my arm. So starting off, we have the William Greffe set from Arrow Video. Um, I think this is something that I'll probably move on in the future. I would really like if there was a single edition release of The Sting of Death because that's such a fun film. And there are some other notable films in this collection but a few of the films in the double features in this box set are pretty poor and I will never watch them again so that was probably something I'm going to purge at some point but it's too new in my collection to get rid of that so soon. Uh, the BFI release of Napoleon, we have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 from Arrow Video Special Edition. I've not opened this one yet, I've not had it in my collection for super long but I do own the standalone edition which I'll move on as soon as I open this one. The Complete Sartana, now this is a fantastic set, it's got some really fun western films in here that really work well if you used to watch them like with a group of people, um, so you can sort of pick fun at it because uh, it's a really good time. I've not opened this American Project Volume 2 yet but I need to get around to that. This is a fantastic uh, set of the Female Prison Scorpion Saga which is like a Japanese exploitation women in prison uh, sort of series of films. So it's really, really good. I think this edition is limited to 4,000 copies. Uh, yeah, 4,000 copies. So very lucky to have that one because I think it goes for quite a bit of money now. Um, Tremors, classic. This is a recent edition. 
Alejandro Hodorowski set. This was one of my uh, sort of most anticipated releases of last year. And um, yeah, I've not got my way through it yet because this was my introduction to this crazy director and the Holy Mountain was very overwhelming um, in all senses. Uh, so I know that I'm going to need to be in a very particular frame of mind to watch the rest of his filmography, but so far um, I'm, I'm really uh, enjoying his work. So that's good. Just a few uh, indicator box sets. This is a great edition of Road Game starring Stacey Keach and Jamie Lee Curtis. It's like an Australian production. Um, the marketing for this film was really interesting because it made it look like it was like a slasher. It's more like a, a, a comedy adventure thriller type film. Uh, so it wasn't what I was expecting, but to be honest, it, it probably uh, works in its favour to, to be like that. So uh, I haven't opened this one yet. Uh, this is Scum by Alan Clark. Um, uh, I've actually picked this up because I need to study it <laughs> for my course that I'm doing at the moment. So, uh, yeah, that's the reason I've got that. It's still sealed. I haven't, I haven't needed to uh, watch it yet for my course. So got that, uh, sweet charity, uh, not open this one yet. There's a few of these special editions I haven't opened yet. So I do apologize, but I will get around to watching them. Uh, night tide. This is like, uh, presented by Li Nicholas Winding Refn and it's, uh, I've got an early performance from Dennis Hopper in it. Then we have the Vinegar Syndrome Amazing Forgotten Jally box sets. So uh, uh, as you, if you're new here, you'll come to learn that I absolutely love Jallo. Um, there are some duds in the, in the genre as there is in all genres, but um, yeah, there's some great films in these box sets. Uh, so yeah, they're really fantastic. Really getting into Vinegar Syndrome at the moment. Really love their mission statement of like restoring and preserving and putting out like fantastic uh, like straight to VHS sometime films uh, on Blu-ray in fantastic quality. Uh, the Beastmaster, this was like on a lot of uh, end of year lists for people in the Blu-ray collecting community. Uh, I've not watched that one yet, but it's on my watch list. This was my favorite box set of last year. It's the Lindsay Baker complete Jallo collection set. Um, yeah, uh, it's absolutely incredible from seven films. I love, love, love that set. It's amazing. Fu Manchu Cycle. Um, it's the Christopher Lee sort of definitely not PC um, box set of films from 1965 to 1969. Uh, yeah, I've watched one of the, f the face of Fu Manchu from this box set. And yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. And um, I bought this more as like a film education sort of film school thing just to learn more about the context and why these films were made at the time so that's interesting uh the zatoichi box set so this looks like it's sealed but it isn't i have opened it i've just kept the protective cover on it fantastic oh artwork here uh yeah this is awesome it's got like 25 films on it i think i've watched like eight of them or something um, so they're just ones I shove on every now and again, but it's a really good, really good set. So this shelf is a bit out of place, but just to explain, this is the beginnings of my curation. So every week I'm going to um, add three films to my collection and uh, for like forever collection, sort of my curation or like my favorite films and films that I rewatch a lot. And then I'm getting rid of a film a week. So by the end of the year, I should have 150 films um and then got rid of 50 films throughout the year so just to make some space for future purchases and just to sort of cut back and make room basically declutter so we have the criterion edition of Mulholland drive a fantastic 4k still book of the big lebowski uh 4k 2001 space odyssey from the titans of cult which is a really good set i did an unboxing of that on the channel a while back uh the thing uh, I also have the special edition version of that. I do probably need to, um, I do probably need to get rid of this one at some point. Um, it's just uh, for uniformity here. Uh, Nashville, one of the greatest films ever made from 1975, the greatest year for cinema. Uh, argue with me in the comment section below if you don't think it is the best year. <laughs> uh, Mirror, again from 75 by Andrei Tarkovsky. Uh, absolute revelation of a film. I'm hoping that the Criterion 
put out a awesome edition of this at some point in the future because th there's nothing too wrong with this it's just i know there's a 4k restoration out there that's been circulated by janus films uh who work with the criterion and um i just need to see it because this is uh, one of my all-time favorite films i have two copies of the passion of joan of arc one from eureka master cinema and one from the criterion collection because of the special features this is in my top 10 films of all time normally i wouldn't double dip i very rarely double dip actually but because it is in my top 10 films of all time and there are exclusive bonus features on these discs that aren't on the other one i've got two copies of it so lost boys one of my favorite films from my childhood and still to this day close up by abbas kiristami amazing film and then we have a trio of Lucio Fulci films, Zombie Flesh Eaters for Arrow Edition. The New York Ripper, Blue Underground 4K Restoration. I really need to get that 4K actual disc because this has just been downsized for, um, for a Blu-ray disc, even though this still looks absolutely fantastic. Don't Torture a Duckling. I'd love to get the slipcover for this one day because one of my it is probably my favourite Lucio Fulci film and a really great giallo. Um, and some Lucio Fulci fans aren't a fan of this one because it's a little more narrative driven uh, than some of his other films and less focused on like the gore aspects but this is in my opinion his best made film uh, in terms of like technical uh, stuff so it's it's fantastic. Uh, 4k steelbook edition of Halloween uh, love this The Deer Hunter 4k uh, Michael Cimino classic uh, war film, Vietnam war film, Days of Heaven, Terence Malick, one of the most beautiful looking films of all time. Uh, some indicator box sets just to make up some space on the on the shelves. The Marlena and Joseph von Sternberg box set. Uh, this is possibly the best box set I own in terms of its packaging and the quality of the films in here. So this is from 1930 to 1935 and it has most of Marlena Dietrich's great films in it and it's superb. William Castle, uh, Volume 1, so that's really fun from Indicator. Um, as much as I enjoyed these films, I'm not entirely sure that these are ones I'm going to revisit year after year. Um, so we'll see how that goes in the curation, but um, again, Indicator do the best box sets out there in the market at the moment and I can't fault the the, the quality of the packaging and special features, it's just the films themselves sometimes from Indicator aren't ones that I'm going to revisit a lot. So, but uh, anyway, it's still really cool. Uh, Buster Keaton, this is really hard to get hold of now, it's out of print. And it's a three film collection of Sherlock Jr., The General and Steamboat Bill, and it is absolutely incredible. If you've never seen a Buster Keaton film, you can get this set in like a smaller, a standard edition version and I highly recommend picking that up for some sort of silent comedy action. John Ford at Columbia. Now this is a fantastic set, one that I will revisit a number of the films in this box set. Um, yeah, it's just, just great stuff from Indicator here. So here we have a the Screen Factory edition of Creep Show. Great fun, classic. And then the Arrow edition of Creep Show 2, which comes with a cool comic book inside. Um, we have Second Sight's The Strangers, which is, uh, I think, an underrated film. Um, I really enjoyed this. I don't know, I guess I just have anxiety about home invasion, so uh, I kind of uh, <laughs> I kind of enjoyed this one quite a lot. Robocop. Now, this is one of the best editions that Arrow have ever put out in terms of like the special features, supplements and stuff. Uh, Paul Ver Verhoeven's always great anyway, generally, and uh, yeah, this edition is uh, a knockout. The Thing, I recently created this into my collection. This is one of my all time favorite films and this edition is also absolutely awesome. The Ring Collection, uh, so it has Ring, Ring 2 and Ring Zero, the original Japanese films. Crash, this was probably my favorite release of last year. This is the 4K edition, uh, directed by David Cronenberg. And again, the special features are stacked, love it. This is my special, special, special edition of Donnie Darko, directed by Richard Kelly, and it's so special because I got it signed by the director. I really need to put like a, a protector cover on this just to preserve the uh, the autograph more than anything else. But 
yeah, I uh, absolutely love this film. It holds a special place in my heart, and this edition is also very special to me. And then last for this shelf is uh, the uh, Park Chan-wook box set, uh, tr uh, Vengeance sort of series of Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, Lady Vengeance, and Old Boy. Um, yeah, so that, that's that's great fun. So this next shelf is my Vinegar Syndrome uh, titles. A lot of these I haven't watched yet, but I picked them up uh, from the uh, 2020 November Black Friday sale. Uh, so yeah, I'm still working my way through them, but we have the telephone book, Red Roses of Passion, Demon Wind, Pets, Incubus, In the Cold of the Night, uh, the Corruption of Chris Miller, and this is one I'm really excited to watch as it's like a Spanish production uh, Jallo film. So yeah, uh, if you've not watched my channel before, you'll know that I, you'll find out that I am quite a big Jallo fan, although there are some duds in the genre, uh, as there is with every genre, I guess. Um, I'm typically a really big fan of what the genre has to offer. So Night Beast. Putney Swope, this is one of Paul Thomas Anderson's all-time favourite films. Uh, Tammy and the T-Rex. Spookies. The Candy Snatchers, heard nothing but great things about this one. Uh, the Amateur Filmies, Matt and Sarah talked about this on their channel. And said it was like very reminiscent of something like The Last House on the Left. Very like exploitative film, um, excited to watch. Olivia. Good slipcovers now coming up. Patty Hearst. This is a Paul Schrader film. Uh, so very sort of different for Vinegar Syndrome to put in something like this out. And this is what actually the title that actually um, got me like looking more into this uh, this label um, because this I heard that this was released by them. So Blood Games, very fun sort of nineteen nineties. Uh, exploitation film sort of uh, women on a revenge rampage sort of thing is really fun uh, the severed arm the cooler starring Malcolm McDowell uh, grave robbers rest in pieces is directed by uh, Ramon Laraz Jose Ramon Laraz I never remember his name properly uh, then we have cemetery of terror now this is a great watch such a great zombie film um, yeah, highly recommend getting this one if you if you have the means to. Fate of Black, classic film. So glad that uh, Vinegar Syndrome were able to manage to work out the rights to get this one out. Silent Madness, it's a 3D slasher film. Dimensions Occultus. Uh, I won't show the front cover to that one, uh, but the Flemme uh, Objet. Uh, LA Wars, this is such a fun uh sort of 90s action i think it's like straight to vhs or is like a late night tv movie but it is so much fun and uh i even had fun watching this by myself but i can imagine having a lot more fun watching it in a group of people so that was really good this is from the vsa so the vinegar syndrome archive series really really fun yeah, my pop of immortan joe from mad max fury road one of my favorite films then we have some sorry about the glare here we have some indicator titles so we have a Christine from John Carpenter. Uh, this is just a normal edition, no booklet or anything in there. Uh, one of my favourite Brian De Palma films, uh, Body Double. Really good, really good film. Um, Rita Hayworth, Awesome Wells, Lady from Shanghai. Such a great film. Uh, Hardcore, not watched this one yet, but it's a Paul Schrader film. Really enjoying Paul Schrader's work. The Big, the big Heat, pretty, pretty good. Uh, uh, film noir film from Fritz Lang um, who started his career out in, in Germany in the 20s uh, Wolf Birdie The Pumpkin Eater The Border Jack Nicholson Track 29, this is an interesting one it's directed by Nicholas Rogue who is a director I'm, I'm always fascinated by um, this is one thing I will re-watch because my first viewing was very mixed. It had some really great moments in it and it's very, uh, I think a repeated viewing is definitely gonna cement my feelings whether I want to keep this in my collection or not. But um, yeah, it's got 
uh, the gorgeous Teresa Russell in it and uh, yeah it's a, it's an interesting one and I will revisit it to sort of get more feelings about that one the legacy uh, no orchids uh, for Miss Blandish uh, spring night summer night I'm actually probably going to watch this this weekend um, I've been wanting to watch this one for a while Cisco Pike this is such a great film completely out of nowhere I basically picked this up because of Brian Sauer or from Just the Tisks and uh, Pure Cinema podcast fame and uh, he listed this as one of the best releases of 2020 so I thought I'd pick it up and uh, I can see why this is re this really great 70s gritty um, gritty film uh, starring Gene Hackman, Karen Black, Chris Christopherson it's got great music and it's just so 70s and I absolutely love this. This will definitely get rewatched and will make my curation um, series at some point. If not this year, then maybe another year if I carry on doing this series. But it's it's a great film that I will rewatch. Eve. Um, this is a Robert Altman film, Buffalo Bill and the Indians. Moving down, we have uh, Fortune. This is a really difficult title to, to, to say. The effect of gamma rays on the man and the moon marigolds. Um, I've heard a few people talking about this one and I managed to pick it up cheap. Um, the secondary market still sealed, so that's pretty cool. Uh, suddenly last summer, the China Syndrome, Modern Romance. I have seen this film before, but this one's still sealed. But uh, this has got some pretty cool uh, special features on it. So yeah, uh, look forward to watching that one. Hussy. Starring a young um, Helen Mirren. The Snake Pit. Uh, starring Olivia de Havilland, one of the greatest actresses of all time. Missing. Great. I think this won the Palm Door when it came out. Jack Lemmon, Sissy Spacek. Age of Consent, another early film starring Helen Mirren. Oleana. I've heard really good things about this one. Holiday. So this is uh, from, I think you can see it there, Anti Worlds. So this is an offshoot of uh, Indicator. It's like a. Um, sort of like a sister um, boutique Blu-ray label that's owned by Lime, Limewood, I think is the over, like the, the the actual name of the company that owns Indicator. And they've only managed to put out like six films, I believe, and this is the one I picked up. And it's this is an absolutely brutal film. Um, it has some extremely graphic content in it, but it's really, really good. Um, has a lot of artistic merit, in my opinion. Um, I don't see anyone really talking about this. I think this is released, this limited to 3,000 copies. Will it, will it? There we go. 3,000 copies. So um, I think it's still available. So uh, yeah, that's, that's really good. 